Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I'm going to be looking at Module Two, the topic of dynamics, which is part of the New South Wales curriculum here in Australia. And the purpose of this video is to give you an overview of the module to help you prepare for future exams. And it is a direct follow-on from Module One, where we look at describing motion or the topic of kinematics. Now, before I start, please consider supporting me by buying my coffee. The link is in the description below. This particular topic looks at explaining motion. And so we're looking at really three key inquiry questions. And the first inquiry question states, how are forces produced between objects and what effects do forces produce? So in essence, we are going to be looking simply at the concept of force. How can the motion of objects be explained and predicted? And in essence, what we're looking is the idea of the force, the acceleration, but also by association, the concept of work. And thirdly, we look at the interactions of objects. Whereas here we looked at just understanding force, here we look at understanding how an object might behave with various forces. Now we're interested in multiple objects interacting. And here we are interested in how is the motion of objects in a simple system dependent on the interactions between these objects. And in essence, we are looking at the concept of momentum. So let's break the first one down. And in essence, we are really interested in the concept of Newton's laws of motion. There are three laws that are often discussed when we're looking at the Newton's three laws. So one, two, and three. And I usually work backwards. I explain that when A applies a force on B, then B applies an equal force back on A. That's the third law. When we have the idea that an object experiencing a net force will accelerate and its acceleration is dependent on that net force and of course its own mass we have our second law and our first law says well if an object has no net force it will move at a constant velocity that it will have a tendency to do what it is already doing which is often associated with the, the concept of inertia so simply put we say Now tied in with that is also bringing in the concept of the idea of a normal force, that is a reaction force. So the fact that I'm standing, that you're sitting on your chair most likely, the gravitational fo force in a simplistic way is pulling you down and you're experiencing a reaction force of the chair back on your backside. We call that the normal force. And so we bring in the concept of the idea that the normal force, generally is speaking, is that force that is perpendicular to the surface. Now that then leads on into our understanding of, well, how does an object therefore behave? And so the first aspect we're interested in is the concept of friction. Now friction is actually quite a complex topic because generally speaking, we can look at friction in a number of different ways, but we're really only interested in the aspect of contact forces, so to speak, in at least the large macroscopic sense of the word. And so we're interested in the idea of static friction and kinetic friction. And so the frictional force is usually determined by the fact that we have a coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal. Now, that of course will mean that the normal may be the weight force, but of course, if you then apply, let's say, a a further situation where we go into inclined planes like this, then the normal is going to be coming up in that direction. And so you then can predict and explain the motion of objects sliding down an inclined plane at a given angle using some of the vector analysis that you learnt in module one, using understanding of normal and Newton's laws, and therefore determine, you know, for example, friction. Now, following on from that, once we have understanding of the forces and we have the mass, you can also determine how that object moves, in this case, the magnitude of the acceleration that it experiences. But then we follow on from there and we look at what we call the work energy theorem. Now, in essence, what we're talking about really is we're looking at mechanical energy. So we're looking at kinetic energy, the fact that an object has energy due to its motion. We have the gravitational potential energy where we're dealing with objects by way of its position within a gravitational field in this case. And then we also have the concept of work where we put energy into the system. And so we have work, which is equal to 
force times displacement, you can see now we're tying in force here, that will change an object's kinetic energy, that will change an object's gravitational energy, possibly either or both. And so you can now analyze and predict the behavior of objects by understanding what energy you might put into the system or take out of the system. And then finally, as a natural flow on from that, we have two aspects. Well, what if we have interested in the rate at which we do this? And so we have the idea of power. And then finally, if we have an object changing energy, then we have the energy coming from some other source, such as the work done. And so what we end up having is the concept of the law of conservation of energy. And that's basically saying within a closed system, the energy remains constant. Energy is transferred or transformed. And so, for example, if you throw a ball up, then the kinetic energy decreases, but its gravitational energy increases. The combined energy in that case remains constant, ignoring, let's say, any energy losses due to friction and heat and so forth. But even then, if we were to capture all the that energy, the total energy remains constant. We then move on finally to the interactions between objects and we introduce the concept of the fact that an object moving has momentum. At least in the classical sense, an object with mass that is moving has momentum and we can increase its momentum by increasing its velocity or increasing its mass. But what we're interested in is interactions when objects collide, for example. And so you might have a change in momentum of the object, which was referred to as impulse. And so that ends up being the force multiplied by the time. Now you can actually derive that from your understanding of forces and your understanding of kinematic equations. If an object interacts, Newton's third law says they will experience the same force for the same amount of time, but in the opposite direction. And so what we end up saying is that the total momentum in a system remains constant. And this is commonly stated as the law of conservation of momentum. So through the topic of dynamics, we are now introduced to two fundamental conservation laws, the law of conservation of energy and the law of conservation of momentum. And in many respects, we can combine the two as I stated, because we may, for example, look at elastic collisions versus inelastic collisions. In both cases, the momentum ends up being conserved, but the kinetic energy does not get conserved because we have energy losses due to sound and heat and so forth. And so we tie in our understanding of both conservation laws to understand the interactions between particles. Well, I hope that has helped you understand dynamics and of course, the previous topic, which is kinematics. Please like, share and subscribe, put a comment down below if this is helpful for you. And please consider buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.